All right, so this is gonna be a bit of a nerdier video. And I think that's okay. Because you see, I wanna put more content on this channel now, and I think a lot of that's gonna be in the camera space and sort of focused around some of the work I'm doing with second shooting, just cinematography in general. But the tech side of things is gonna play into it a lot as well. And I do work in the information technology field as my full-time job, so it's sort of inevitable that these two worlds will cross. And this is definitely one of those cases where they do. Now speaking specifically, I was reviewing some footage from a shoot recently and noticed that the footage one of my good friends shot looked to be playing back just a bit oddly. And sure, I'm used to certain footage of, you know, a very high bitrate or codec um, being difficult to render and kind of what that typical stutter or difficult to process footage looks like when it's being played back, but this looked a bit different. It almost seemed as though it was shot at more of a 360 degree shutter angle, uh, you know, say in this particular case a 1 over 25 shutter speed versus a 1 over 50. This was shot on a Canon 1DX Mark II, and it just seemed to render very oddly in QuickTime. Hopefully that comes through in the B-roll that I lay over this. Now as it turns out, this footage was actually shot in 1 50th of a shutter speed, even though my friend wasn't 100% sure that he could confirm that he did it that way. But we did notice checking it in other programs like VLC, or even non-linear editors like Final Cut Pro, it seemed to play back fine. So it must have been a problem with more than likely the codec, but the interesting part was that we still didn't really have our question answered. What shutter speed was this shot at? I wanted to know if I could simply find that out. Now, when you go to look at the files info through something like, say, Get Info on your Mac, or even in the information tab within Final Cut Pro, it didn't really offer too much data or metadata, data about that data. But I wanted to see what else I could find and how deep we could go in terms of being able to find the answer to that shutter speed question, as well as potentially maybe some others. So enter EXIF tool. Now EXIF tool is a great general purpose program of just looking at metadata for your files, pretty much no matter the file type. Uh, in this case, of course, we're looking into it from the realm of video files. So whether that's .mov, .mp4, whatever wrapper that's around, but trying to see what and how much data we can get from video files. And maybe we could answer the question of, well, what shutter speed was the shot at? But I think to answer this a little more directly, it's probably worth heading over to my computer to kind of give a rundown of what this looks like. All right, so we are now back at my computer, and I figured we could go through at least the basic process of what it looks like to install Exif Tool. So I'll just simply Google it here. Of course, you saw that I've looked at this before and have actually installed it before, but I did remove it just for this purpose. So if we go to the website, you'll see a few options depending on your operating system. In this case, I am running Mac OS 11 Big Sur, so I will pick the Mac OS package. Now in this case, I've relocated the download to my desktop. What you'll notice is uh, when you do click on the uh, DMG file, it will mount it and you'll have the package that you can run. Um, of course, like a lot of third-party apps, it will not let you directly run it. So there's a few ways to get around this. I usually just right click and then we'll open that way rather than double clicking and then click open to reconfirm. Now, once you do that, you can pretty much step through the installer without too much care. and then you're good to go. Okay, so now we're in my terminal after installing Exif Tool. And of course, once it's installed, you'll see just actually typing it will give you all of the different options that you have available to you. Now, in this particular case, I have a couple of different files I wanna explore. Let's actually first take a look at that Canon file we were talking about initially. So I happen to know where this lives and I'm just going to actually work my way into the path here to find it. Now, once I do that, it's essentially just I can take Exif Tool, the actual name of the program, and just point it at the given file I want it to collect metadata about. And once I do that, it will return all of that file's metadata. Now, if you're curious as to how much metadata actually gets returned, one of the things you can do is pipe this to another command, which is a very common operation that you would do in sort of Linux or Unix-based operating systems. And I can use the wc-l command specifically to just get a count of how many different lines and pieces of information this happens to hold. In this particular case, I get back 289 lines of metadata. Now, I won't go through every single piece of information I can get from this file with Exif Tool, since some of this metadata contains serial numbers and items like that. But you'll see even right there, and notice right here that we do actually have shutter speed available to us. 
And so that question was pretty much answered right from the get-go, right? We can also see the bit rate is fairly high, right? We can see a lot of different information about things like the lens. This happened to be uh, the Sigma 18 to 35 that my friend was using at the time. So one of the things I can actually do is go through the different return values from XF tool. Rather than having to kind of scroll through this line by line, I can just search for given terms or queries and return all of those values that contain that somewhere in the text. So specifically, I can use a tool like grep and do a dash i or a case insensitive search to find, say, anything with aperture in it. This happens in this case to have, well, a few different things, right? Uh, so we can see that the aperture used in the Sigma lens was 2.8 when this was shot, but the actual aperture of the lens has a range of anywhere from 1.8 to 16. Um, so that's actually pretty interesting. Now, if I wanted to uh, just get some maybe more general data on the camera itself, you'll notice that I can actually just query a lot of things with Canon and I'll get the make a model back. So as I said, it is a 1DX Mark II. We can get the firmware version. We know that he was in manual exposure when my friend shot this. We also know that he was shooting this in 4K or DCI 4K specifically. So lots of other interesting information there as well. Now, of course, there's a lot more I could show here, but I think we've sort of exhausted uh, some of the Canon values. But it does look like the Canon MOV wrapper, at least as far as files coming out of the 1DX Mark II goes, does offer a fair bit of information that you can get back. One of the other things I was curious was, well, what kind of information can I get back from a different camera's file? Does the metadata differ, say, from a different manufacturer? or make and model. I happen to shoot this gig with a Sony a7 III and happened to have, of course, some files I was curious to uh, check myself. Now, in my case, these files actually did render fine. There was no issue with them in particular. This was merely uh, me, from curiosity standpoint, just wanting to see if and how things differed when viewing metadata from, say, a Sony camera versus this particular Canon model. When I actually went to look at the footage from my Sony camera, I was initially, I'll say, a bit underwhelmed. I did get some metadata back, but as you can see, if we pipe that to that WC-L command, we only get 32 lines of metadata back. And yeah, there is some interesting stuff in there, such as the bit rate of the codec, of course, the frame rate, the resolution, um, and some other pieces of information around the actual wrapper they use. This wasn't particularly interesting. So one of the things you'll notice at the end of this command, though, is a warning statement. And this particular warning statement is kind of leading us onto something. Uh, you'll notice that it says end of processing, large file support not enabled. So it seems as though with Sony files and the way they wrap and pack their metadata, you actually have to do a bit more legwork to get the full extent of metadata that you can get out of the file. And just doing a pure simple command of XF tool and the file name will not be sufficient. So in this case, after some Googling, there is an API flag and it does point to this particular large file support not being enabled. So we'll set the bit on it so that it is enabled and we'll try rerunning that again and see what difference we get when we do that. Now, once I run that, just me scrolling up through different values, I can already tell I've gotten a lot more information than I did the last time. And as a matter of fact, if we just do run a check on the amount of data we get back once we just enable large file support, we get 115 lines of metadata back, right? Um, and that compares very differently before when we only got 32. So we're nearly quadrupling the amount of metadata we can get back just by doing that. However, one of the things I did notice here in scrolling through uh, the different metadata again was yet another warning. In this case, it's a minor warning, whatever that means, but the extracted embedded option may find more tags in the metadata, meaning that there could be even more to find. So as it turns out, you can just throw an extract embedded flag into that command. And once you do that, it will gain, yes, even more information. In this case, it looks like a number of very specific captures for each part of the file. In many cases, this might not be relevant. And as you can see, this kind of makes the amount of metadata we get back a bit more than reasonable to parse through. However, again, we can still find what we believe are relevant values here uh, to look through on Sony's side, right? So if we did want to find some additional uh, metadata on Sony, just kind of parse through what some of the options are. We could do very similar things to what we did on the Canon side, right? We could look for a shutter speed value and find that, hey, this Sony footage was also shot at a 150th uh, shutter speed as well. Now, what we'll find is at the same amount of time, 
though we can find shutter speed. If we go to look for something like aperture here, which we could find on the Canon side, we cannot find that. In fact, we actually cannot find really any metadata on the lens info itself. Um, so clearly the MP4 wrapper and the way Sony utilizes it will not store the same amount of metadata. That said, there are always still unique values that can come across in the different metadata files. So you'll notice Sony does save a fair amount of metadata around audio uh, information, which is nice. Um, and though Canon does this as well, um, one of the other interesting things which I will search for under the term acquisition is I can also see even some of the picture profile information that was done with my shot. So in this particular case, I was using the Cine 4 Gamma when I was shooting this footage. It is using the color gamut. It points to Rec. 709. I was actually using specifically the Pro color gamut, which I believe is Rec. 709 based. But um, sort of just further proving all of the different information you can get back from here. More than anything, the information you do get back will differ from camera to camera, from video wrapper to video wrapper, from manufacturers. There will be differences for sure, but more than likely, EXIF tool will find just about any bit of metadata that is on the file that you can or will need. If you do encounter any oddities, you'll notice like with the Sony files, generally those warnings will point you in the right direction of where to go. And I will leave some of these example commands in the description just so you can take them and use them to your liking. Of course, again, the documentation uh, from EXIF tool itself will probably be the way to go for anything further that wasn't covered here. And so that's EXIF tool. Hopefully this video was informative in some way, shape, or form. Again, this is definitely more of a technical dive into things. Um, I may do some more of these in the future. We shall see. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments, leave a like, and subscribe. Uh, that's all I have to say. So thanks for watching.